In this segment of decision analysis discussion, we would like to talk about two concepts, the expected value of perfect information, EVPI, and expected value of sampled information, EVSR. Let's use our case example from previous discussion. So we are given uh, three states of nature, S1, S2, S3, three decisions, D1, D2, D3. Right? We have already worked out the consultant's uh, expected value, and that's 0 0.5455. And now we like to say, hmm, you know what? Let's calculate the EVPI. To calculate EVPI, we need to first calculate. Right, so to calculate EVPI, uh, we need to first calculate EVWPI, okay, which is expected value with perfect information. Expected value with perfect information. EVPI itself is expected value of which. So there's a silence, uh, silence of without the O there, EVPI, expected value of perfect information. We need to first find out what is expected value with perfect information. And the way it goes is that it is a little bit like um, establishing the regret table, if you still remember in our video discussion earlier on, uh, the regret table in our minimax regret calculation. Right. So what we do is, if S1 or S2 or S3 were to happen, right? Remember in the regret table discussion, we were talking about this. So if S1 were to happen, earlier on when we count, when we were as uh, creating, constructing the regret table, we say we will have no regret if we um, had been advised to choose the decision alternative with the highest payoff, right? So in that in, in the previous discussion, it was 2.0 and we'll record down a zero for our regret. Here, we don't record zero for our regret, we just copy the, the value itself. Okay, we just copy the value itself, 2.0. So we copy that down, or here in this case, we highlight it. If S1 were to happen, we'll be so well informed in advance. I'm just creating a story so that we can remember easier. Uh, perfect information, right? So we had perfect information about the future and we know that S1 will happen. If S1 were to happen, we will be we would have so wisely chosen D3 and reap the maximum benefit. So that's 2.0, right? Of course, S1 still happens with a chance of 0 0.1. So that's still factual, still with us. But we are saying that if S1 were to happen, if S2 were to happen, then the maximum payoff that we get will be 0 0.6 along that column, S2 column. If S3 were to happen, then the maximum payoff we will get is 0 0.3. Okay, So it's quite easy, just basically getting the maximum for each state of nature event. Then what do we do? Because we still have knowledge about the probabilities, we will basically be multiplying, doing a sum product of the probabilities with all the maximum payoffs for each of the state of nature. Okay, so what we do then is to obtain the expected value and add them all up: 0.2 plus 0.36 plus 0.09. You should find that the that expected value, where we sum product the probabilities with kind of a very selective right uh, choice of the payoffs, and we choose only the maximum. And if even if the there are a few. Uh, cells containing the maximum, but they are of the same value, right? So it's okay. No, no problem with that. So we just pick the maximum value. And then we arrive at this value, which is then called the EVWPI, the expected value with knowledge of the perfect information. Okay. Now what this means, as you can probably sense from our our uh, manner of calculation here is that we can safely say EV with PI all right, represents the maximum EV we can ever hope to achieve given this set of 
prob uh, payoff tables, even this payoff table and probabilities. All right, so EV WPI, EV with perfect information, you already have perfect information about the future. You know as what will to happen, you would have done the right thing to get the maximum payout, right? So if you sum product with the, with the probabilities, you basically will be calculating the maximum achievable EV. That means if you have knowledge about the future, the most you can achieve out of this given uh, table of information about the payoffs is EV with PR. Uh, okay, good. Then, calculating expected value of perfect information, EVPI, is easy. It is basically EV with PI minus our original unassisted EV. Okay, so we get uh, 0 0.16. The expected value of sampled information is then basically done in a similar manner right so what we do is the expected value with sampled information will be the ev we arrived at from the decision tree okay from the decision tree and evsi a question that is frequently asked for you to solve problems you will be asked to calculate evsi right for many of these problems is going to be EV with SI without cost minus the original EV. So let's write that down. Uh, EV PI is the expected value with perfect information minus the original EV. Whereas, and I need to stress here, EV SI, on the other hand, is EV with SI, and let me note, without cost, minus EV. All right, so the consultant cannot be charging cost. Uh, if the consultant charges high cost, and you decided not to, not to use the consultant, because the consultant charges high cost, right? That's, that's common sense. You still have to... Um, negate the effects of the cost by adding back the cost yeah so that you will get the ev with si without the cost then you less off with the ev now what's the big deal about this without cost the whole idea is ev si measures the the quality of the consultant's information is it helping the situation our situation is ev we are at ev is it improving all right does the consultant bring us to a better EV or not. With or without cost, let's not talk about that. Just by the advice and the outcomes of the consultant's work, does it help to improve our EV? So EVSI measures the, the content, the, the uh, gives us a measure of how good or how bad the advice or the consultancy is. Okay. So let's switch over to uh, our whiteboard and try to understand what is this uh, notion of EV with PI, EV PI and so on. So, so let's again draw a money line and here I will put EV with PI okay? and the number calculated was 0 0.65. Notice that it is on the extreme right end 